Okay, so hello. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to be um, working on a pattern that is for the Blossom Crossbody um, bag by Backstock Design. Um, I purchased this pattern. Uh, I know it's one of uh, the newest patterns that she has, and um, I think it's a, I've heard it's a really good pattern. Let me move the camera a little bit so you can see me. And so um, I need a new bag. <laughs> I know I have other bags, but I, I just need a new bag, right? I The bags that I have, I'm not liking anymore. And I see how this pattern is so cute. And so my daughter also wants one. And so we decided that I was going to make one for me first and see how I like it. And then if I like it, we're going to make one for her as well. So let me see. Um, so I have not... Uh, this is my first time doing this with my uh, camera, so excuse the delay or the technical difficulties that I'm having here. Um, okay, okay, perfect. So this is what I'm going to do today. I usually take my the patterns that I purchase if they don't if the pattern maker doesn't have the pattern the back designer sorry doesn't have a svg file you know that i can upload to the cricut and then have the fabric cut that way uh, or you know have maybe like freezer paper and then uh, trace it onto the fabric etc and i can i can try that uh, on another video but i'm not gonna get sidetracked today <laughs> So what I do is that when I have paper patterns like this, that obviously after you use it for a while, it will get damaged and you have to keep printing this paper uh, pattern, right? And so what I've been doing is that I go to the dollar store or the dollar 25 store now, and I get these, um, excuse my, I don't know how to say this word, chopping mats. Um, they're plastic and they're perfect for um, you can use them obviously in the kitchen to cut your vegetables or fruits or whatever but I use them to create templates for my patterns so that's what we're going to do today what I like about them is that they are kind of see through a little bit so if you are uh, placing this on top of a fabric that you want to cut out a specific like design like fussy cutting this is really good because you can clearly see the, the fabric through this plastic see here's my hand you can clearly see it it's thin enough it's very thin that just regular scissors work I can just cut it, no problem. Regular scissors work just fine. And um, and that's it. And then I can't, my patterns will, and they're big enough. Another thing is that they're pretty long. So they're about what? What did it say here? The measurements, 11 inches by 14. Not bad. For bag making, you know, it's good because most of the patterns for bag making are about that size, you know, unless you're making like a book bag or a, um, a travel or like a, what's it called, a duffel bag or something like that that is bigger, maybe not. But what I've done in other cases, if I if I need like a longer piece, I just kind of tape tape them together, tape two pieces together and make it longer. So I don't know if we're gonna do that today. I don't think so. I think these pieces are pretty small. Um, so they will fit in here. Now, some of these um, that I sew in the pattern 
are um, like rectangles or, um, you know, for like the connectors or uh, small straps, etc. Those, I'm not going to create a template for that unless I have like extra plastic and then I'm like okay but those I can actually put the measurements on the Cricut machine and the machine will cut those for me the foam the decoville light the fat the vinyl quilting cotton canvas anything I can just put those measurements and the machine will spit it out but when you have things like round like this then that's another story so we're not i'm not gonna kind of show you the pattern obviously because it's a paid pattern so you can go to her website once i'm done with this video today i'll put the link down below i am not an affiliate so i don't get any money for this but i'm just gonna give it a try right so yeah go get her pattern it's not a free pattern, so I'm not going to show you the pattern. Um, I'm just going to show you how I transfer the pattern and how I make templates using these um, Dollar Tree um, mats, clear mats. So, um, what I like about her, uh, her patterns is that she labels everything for you and so not only she gives you you know the the pattern I'm sorry I got a mess let me show let me point at the camera now to this but she also gives you the list for the labels so that you can actually um, label your pro your pieces um, and compare your pieces with um, the label so so the pieces have the label um, the coats for that I don't know if um, if I have anybody here today <laughs> I'm testing like I said I'm testing this new thing and I do not, it doesn't tell me if anybody's viewing it doesn't tell me anything so Oh, press the wrong button. Okay. Okay, so there are two ways that you can do this. You can take your actual pattern like this, and then you can trace it. And um, I, for that, I just use a Sharpie. And um, a lot of the times, what I also do is that I put like some masking tape. Let me get some masking tape. or you know pa tape um, painters tape so that my my piece doesn't move and then I move it around then I take my ruler. Can you see this? Okay, I'm here. You can see my computer. 
Okay. My setup is a little weird. But. So I take my ruler and I have, I, you know, I go really slowly. I like to trace it because, like I said, if I want to place this on top of my fabric and I want to see the design, I won't be able to do that if I have the piece of tape, uh, of paper uh, glued to the temp to the template. But I kind of go around it a little bit like this. And then I just, can you see? Oh, you can't see. Okay, let me move this up. Okay, sorry, you couldn't see. Okay. I just go around really slowly. Then I move my masking tape. From one side to the other going around the curves carefully and I take my ruler again and move this one more time okay Go straight like that and then I get to the edge here and again I take my ruler I trace it there and I trace it some more there now as you can see, there's um, a little bit of Sharpie on my ruler. Uh, alcohol will take care of that. That's usually what I do. I just put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in there and then that comes right off. So I take my tape and I put my piece here and now I trace, I cut my piece with my scissors. Oh, and cut on the inside of the line, sorry. So you see how there's a, the line? Let me see, there you go. You're going to cut on the inside of the line. That is where the edge of the paper was. you can see it's very thin and these are like regular scissors oh this camera it keeps moving hold on hopefully it's better now you can see my cat there <laughs> Valentino okay is it better now you can see the shape and again you're gonna cut on the inside of the line This could be a little bit tricky to transfer your measurements, you know, transfer your templates like this, because um, you could, um, you know, make the piece a little bit bigger or smaller, but as long as you uh, go really slow, right, and you, okay, the camera's moving again. just stay <laughs> this is obviously life as you can tell <laughs> okay <laughs> I 
think it's I think it's staying now. I think it's not moving. Okay, good. So, as I was saying, when you're tracing it, just make sure this way. Just make sure that you take your time, trace it carefully, and if you use a sharpie with a, not the fine point, but the well, this this says fine point, but I don't know. Okay, there. This one says fine point, but it is kind of thick a little bit. And you see how thick it is? Just make sure that you, when you're tracing it, that you cut on the inside of the line. So we're gonna do that again. But once I have it all traced and I cut it, then on top here, I will write what's on the original pattern. So I will write the name of the designer, right? In this case, it's a backstock design. So that I know which pattern it is. And this is the Blossom Crossbody Bag. Um, this is the side G. I will put the type, and if it has anything else, like it will tell you how many to cut. She says cut one lining, cut one uh, interfacing, right? And, um, if there are any other markings on it, like say unfold or something like that, I will mark it here, just like it. That way it's there, it's everything is there. Now, sometimes this is going to, after you use it so many times, it's gonna to start to you know wear off. Um, I've been thinking about putting like a piece of clear tape on it, that way it can stay you know, in place. But I do that and then I just um, clip them together in the meantime. Um, that way, once I have everything ready and I know which, I have all my parts cut and every, all, all the pieces cut and everything, then I may just take the paper piece and put it away somewhere else or just keep them all together in a bag uh, that way I can have easy access. But if you notice, I put the piece of paper on top of my clear template and it's the right size. See, it's not, the piece of paper is not bigger or smaller. And that's another way that you can compare to make sure that, um, that you, you know, didn't mess up. So that's one. And then I'm going to do the other side from that paper. And like on this paper, she has a little connector here and a little rectangle. I'm going to keep it, but I am not going to trace it uh, because what for? I mean, I can't cut this using the machine here. Uh, uh, Cricut and just type the measurements and it will cut the fabric for me so this type of shapes I don't I don't care about now if all the shapes for the pattern for the for this um, design are squares or rectangles then I don't do this I put it all I create a document in the design the design space and I just keep it there and then I just print them. But because this has curves, then I have to uh, I have to do that. So here we go again. Now you can also um, take your piece of tape fold it like that, place it right there and just 
include your piece of paper and then trace it again trace it really carefully but at least you know your paper is not going to move you know i have the fan going right now because it's hot in here <laughs> let me move this out of the way uh and my paper's not moving i do use my ruler though if i have straight lines like that because i just want to make sure they are really straight And this one. And now when I get here to the curve, I just make sure to go slowly, no rush. If you have a ruler that is kind of like a curve, um, which I do, I have a template, let me go get it. But I do have a template that is, um, I bought it from So Sweetness, and it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a, round like that and I also have another one that my husband got me one year and um, it's kind of big let me let me bring both of them in and see let me see do I have anything going here no both of them and, and see. Let me see, do I have anything going here? No. Hold on, I will be right back. Let me go get those two rulers. Ya vengo. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Sorry, hold on. Give me, give me just a minute. <sighs> okay, so I'm back. So what I was saying is, 
for the curves when you do when you do these patterns when you're transferring these patterns and making your your templates you know you want to follow um sorry you want to follow your template as much as possible and you put your little piece and then you kind of get your ruler right and you trace around the, the straight lines but I had purchased from uh, So Sweetness this template a while back. And it's actually really useful. I am not an affiliate of So Sweetness. I don't get paid for doing this, okay? I just want to make sure I clarify that. Um, she probably doesn't even know I make these videos. But anyway, so what I'm going to test now is see how I traced my pattern and I have this curve I could easily do like I did with this one I just go around a little bit at a time around the corners and it turned out okay you know it turned out good but if I don't want to do that and I just want to be a little more exact I could also take this template right here or any other and see you see that's it it's perfect that is a good um, round corner there so I take my sharpie and carefully go around the corner right just a little bit then I take my other ruler and it may not be a straight line but this is a straight line i just didn't cut it right okay <laughs> you can tell you <laughs> that i didn't cut it right okay so now i have my original pattern here right and um actually the line It's not straight. Okay. Um, let me do something. Oh, okay. I can't. I'm trying to move the camera. When I came back, I couldn't get the camera right this time around again. Okay. I think that's better. Okay. So. Here's my original pattern that I'm tracing. I'm gonna put it face down here real quick. And I traced it. And now I'm gonna grab my um, little piece of um, carving bore. And I am going to cut it inside the line, okay? Make sure that you cut it inside the line. So here it is, and here's the original. And as you can see, it has it's perfect. It goes around the original pattern piece perfectly. And I'll just write, you know, the name of the um, 
this is the <laughs> this is the right side i need to remember that this is the right side like this is the top um hmm. how do i do this to make sure okay let me write down the name of the designer This is the blossom uh, crossbody back. Okay, but it's two of the same pieces. So what did I do? Oh. I <laughs> they go like this so I have to um, so this is the right and this is the left actually okay this is this is F as she call him and that's the G okay that's why she um, and it's the same thing cut one lining and one woven interface okay so you see now I have my two pieces of patterns and they match and if something doesn't match then you just trim it some more like this one I can tell it's a little more here than I wanted to like where is this camera use me right there oh my god it's a little the the plastic is a little over the paper a little bit in there so I'm just going to trim it a little more You know, that's how you compare to make sure that your patterns match and that your template is the exact same size as your original pattern. And this one was fine. Okay, and then I keep them all together like this. Okay. There you go. Okay, so next I am going to cut another pattern, another pattern piece from this um, pattern of mine. I, I have the fan on because it's hot in here. I'm in Florida and it's already 94 degrees outside. This is crazy. Okay. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is that you can actually tape the pattern piece to this uh, template, this plastic. You can tape it and then trace around it and then cut it and keep it like that. Keep it taped. But I can tell you right now that it's not gonna last very long because I have done that and it doesn't doesn't stay. The, pla the paper will eventually uh, come loose. One thing that this little mat that you can buy at the dollar store has that you can then decide um, to know which one is the, the right side and which one is the, the front and the back is that the one side of the mat is like super smooth and the other side is a little bit rough and you can decide if you want the smooth side to be like the front the top that way if you know that if you're cutting this piece if the pattern piece is, has a curve this way instead of that you know you cut it correctly you can say well all my pattern pieces the right way you know front is 
on the smooth side or it can be on the uh, matte side because this is kind of matte. I prefer to use the matte side as my um, right side only because when I write the pattern information, I feel that it stays on the pat on the template a little bit longer than if I write it on the smooth side. It, it wears off faster with you know using it over and over again. So it just stays a little bit longer on on this um, on this side. So that's why I just do it that way. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I did it for this one. No, I did it for this one. Yes. And let me see. Did I do it for this one? <laughs> nope okay that's why it's important that you write everything on your pattern and then you do it right i mean you can obviously retrace it and cut it again because things are not that expensive uh, but you, know, you just don't want to have to do it over and over um they used to they used to have more i think it's only two um two pieces of carving mats in this packaging um, but they are a dollar 25 so and I have a couple more I usually use about for a regular for a, just a uh, pattern for a purse about three packages so about six of these but let's go ahead and do it again so i'm going to take my regular pattern you know from this designer and this is not a free pattern so i'm not showing you the pattern but if you want to go get her pattern um please feel more than welcome i am not an affiliate i'm not getting any money out of it um, she's she's really good this is the slip pocket okay i'm gonna do it. okay so I'm just going to place my piece of paper here and I just put a little piece of paper so that it doesn't fly away or it doesn't just move around right then I take my ruler and I'm just going to trace it <laughs> the fruit. This side. And the bottom. And then I have the curves. And um, like I said, for the curves, you have two options. You can either just go slowly, go little by little and do your curves or if you have a cap of a, for a bottle cap or a plate or anything that you know is about that big i have you can use that i have this uh, corner rounding template from so sweetness that i purchased a few years ago and it is actually really good but you see that it's not the right size and this one is not either okay so and this is too big this is 3.5 mil uh, inches and this is five inches so now i know for this <laughs> let's see if the tape works ah, the tape works <laughs> perfect I'm telling you it's better to have something to guide you than having to do free-handed I am not I cannot draw if my life depended on it so some people can and they can do circles no problems not me I cannot do that so I need all the templates and all the help I can get 
and I am not ashamed of it. Okay, there. So, now, you can cut it with the paper there, or you can just remove the paper and cut it, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut it with the paper. That way, I make sure I'm following my template. Feel like I cut part of the paper and that's a, rid a risk you run when you have the paper and don't take it out that you could actually cut a little piece of the paper but I think I did good um, the round edges here is still a little too big Perfect. Okay, so you see, I take my template out, and then I can write here what what part this is. This is the exterior, the lining, the, the front pocket, whatever it is. And the best part about these templates is that you see how clear you can see the mat. So if I have a piece of fabric that I know that I specifically want. Uh, the design to be a specific and specifically there on uh, you know I can put my template right where I want the design to be and then I can just trace and cut it and this template is going to last me a long long time because it's plastic it's not it's not going to um, break easily it's not going to tear apart easily so that's why I use these. So yeah, now I'm going to pretty much continue <laughs> cutting all of the pieces for this pattern. Um, and so this is the rough side, right? That I said I was going to write. And this is um, this is P. This is P. And this is a backstock design. This is the designer, right? This is who I purchased the pattern from. And um, the bag is the Blossom Crossbody bag. And the P I know is the slip pocket. Oh, this is the, okay, it's not the part P. Okay, this is the fold, I think. Okay, so yeah, you mark everything that's in your pattern, you'll mark it on this template. That way you can, um, you can see it and you know. Because obviously if it's in the pattern, it's important information. Okay, so, and then I keep those two together. Some of the guys I play with. I'm life. Uh, that, but no, tell me in just a moment. I'm, I, this is life. And this We're is on old life gym. right now. People are listening. We're on old gin. Mm -hmm. Doing okay, but cooking in a basket because we're on old gin. I need to get at least a S. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. Happy life, people. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I think that's going to be for today. I'm just going to continue cutting my fabric here. I mean, not fabric. 
I'm just going to continue. Um, oh my goodness. Cutting my patterns. Um, hold on a second. Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you? I'll go. Cool. 